Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, I want to talk about adult algebra. Now, some of you might be saying, well, is adult algebra different than algebra that is taught like in high school? No, algebra is algebra. So what I'm really talking about here is how do you learn mathematics or algebra in this uh, particular uh, case, you know, later in life, right? Uh, for those of you who've been away from any kind of formal education for a long time, you know, how would you approach this? Maybe you have to learn uh, mathematics on kind of, you know, outside of school, kind of in an independent manner. You know, what are some things that you need to be thinking about? And that's the whole idea behind uh, this video is I want to give you some concrete tips that will make all the difference in the world uh, in terms of learning mathematics later uh, in life, right? So if you have kind of any apprehension about math or algebra, you know, if you uh, reflect back to when you were, uh, were in school and you had a terrible experience with, you know, a particular math subject or a math teacher, you know, how do you kind of overcome that? And, you know, how do you become successful at mathematics, you know, later in life? So this is kind of the main idea of this video. And I'm going to give you some uh, specific suggestions and recommendations uh, later as we, uh, we get going. Uh, if you want to check out my math courses, I'm going to leave uh, the links to all my math courses too, including my algebra course in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. And before we uh, kind of get going here, I like you, uh, you know, I've got a question for you. I'd like you to um, put into the comment section. You know, what's been your experience with math, right? Do you think uh, you are uh, better right now if you happen to be older as an adult? Do you think you're better at learning in general? Okay, do you think you can learn math better than uh, when you were in school? And and tell me why, you know, like, you know, why do you think you're better? Or maybe you think, no, I, you know, my mind is shot. You know, I just don't remember things. Maybe you were better at learning, you know, when you were younger in school versus now, right? So what's your take on it? Uh, I'd be kind of curious to, uh, you know, see your comments on that. But let's go ahead and get into this. And um, I'm going to kind of break it down in this way. Now, we're talking about learning algebra later in life. But I can uh, replace um, algebra with geometry, calculus. It doesn't make a difference. So this is kind of uh, pretty universal advice, okay? But when I think about it, without kind of giving you too many little uh, uh, details here, I kind of want to um, really break this up in four, four main concepts, right? And if you follow these four kind of main concepts, you will absolutely be successful in learning anything you want. Uh, definitely, you know, algebra, trigonometry, or, you know, physics, or whatever. You know, this is kind of, you know, a general uh, guideline to learning, at least, you know, uh, from my experience. And I've been teaching math for decades and learning math and other things. So um, hopefully this is going to help you out. And let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing, if you are learning uh, algebra later in life, so let's suppose you've been away from school for 30 years or 20 years, you're just like, I gotta go back to college, I gotta get ready for math, I gotta take an algebra course. So what's the first thing you wanna do? Well, you need to check in with your mindset, okay? We all have you know, this memory, of, it's kinda like our personal history, uh, when it comes to uh, school, right? So if you think back, oh, how did I do in elementary school? I can't even remember uh, that far. That was 40 something years ago for me. Uh, you know, I kind of remember, you know, recess and things, but <laughs> uh, obviously I must have done pretty well because I can read and write uh, pretty well and I can, uh, you know, contribute or attribute that to all my awesome elementary school teachers. Now, some of you probably can remember those teachers and I can think back in middle school and high school, Honestly, I was not the best student in uh, school academically. I was distracted. I really didn't care too much about academics. So this is kind of like my own story, right? I think back to that, like, well, you know, so when did I really get serious about uh, learning? Well, for me personally, that's after I went into the Marine Corps. And then I decided, hey, I wanted to, you know, uh, become a military officer, then, you know, learn some disciplines and, you know, really got motivated, right, to actually want to kind of improve myself. So you need to kind of check in with your, you know, personal experience and think, okay, what what do you think, how do you identify yourself in terms as, uh, you know, your identity right now? We all have an identity. Do you feel like you are sh uh, strong academically? Do you think you're smart? Do you think you're not that smart? Do you think you're capable? And our mindsets really are going to, you know, 
uh, dictate how everything is going to turn out for us. Okay, so if you have any kind of negative type of thought patterns, okay, if you're like, yeah, you know, I was terrible, you got to really check in with the things that you're thinking about yourself. You don't even realize it until you stop and think. And you got to be honest. You don't have to tell anyone, but you have to be honest with yourself and just ask yourself deep, deep down inside, do you think that you're capable? Do you think you're bad at math? Do you know, and some of this can happen. I've seen this, um, actually, I've seen this uh, many, many times uh, through the years is somebody, you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s, some math teacher along the way, 30, 40, 50 years ago, told a student or maybe told you or someone else that they were bad at math. Ah, math's not your thing. You're terrible at math. That is the worst thing you can tell anyone, okay? But here's what ends up happening. Uh, people believe this, okay? And unfortunately, uh, you know, I have, again, countless examples. Uh, some poor uh, person way back in 1963, for example, was told, you are bad at uh, math by some teacher, you know, and guess what happened? Well, this whole time they said, you know, I'm bad at math, uh, therefore I'm, uh, you know, not capable of going to college or I'm not capable of becoming an engineer, da, 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 da. And what's really happened with this, this thought was so powerful, it went into this person's brain and it was uh, really kind of constructed a barrier to uh, dreams that a lot of people wanted to accomplish in their life. Now, you might be saying, well, you're being dramatic, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man. No, I am not. I have spoken to so many people who wanted to be an engineer, who wanted to do this, but just didn't have the confidence, right? Their confidence was kind of dictated by what someone, you know, told them. So they just kind of, uh, you know, followed that, you know, path, right? They're like, well, I'm bad at math, so therefore maybe I need to go a different path. So it is very, very, very critical that you ask yourself, you know, if you don't have positive kind of, um, uh, you know, self-esteem about your ability to learn, where did you get that from? Okay. And you're going to have to think in, uh, you know, try to like, you know, remember as much as you possibly can. Uh, now, if, uh, for example, uh, me way back in the good old 1980s, you know, I, w I didn't do uh, well in math. I didn't do well, you know, not because I wasn't capable, because I wasn't trying. I wasn't making an effort, right? So I was like, yeah, I can't really you know, uh, make a judgment call whether I'm, uh, you know, was bad at math because I wasn't even really trying. However, there was a lot of people that early on, you know, they were trying to be a good student and they didn't get the right kind of teacher for them. And someone told some, uh, you know, a teacher or something like that told you something and it just crushed you. Okay. This can happen uh, all through our life. Okay. Even through our adult life. So you got to consider the uh, source. And if anyone tells you Anything negative about you, you got to get those people out of your life. Okay, uh, that's how I feel about it, <laughs> and I think that's how you should feel about it as well. But before you start to learn math, okay, later as an adult, make sure you have a good, strong, healthy mindset. Okay, you need to be open-minded about this stuff, especially if you had some sort of negative uh, learning experience. Maybe you dropped out of school, and later on you had to get your GED. Or whatnot. Okay, so I'm um, just telling you right now, uh, you need to believe in yourself 100% totally. All right, and for me personally, what really helped me uh, with my mindset was the United States Marine Corps. Right, that was some of the best uh, mental mindset training in your life because you do things where you don't think you could possibly do it. Okay, but then you get forced to, to go past your limit of belief. And I'm telling you right now, you know, algebra is certainly not as difficult <laughs> as the Marine Corps. Uh, so you can learn algebra, even if you, you know, dropped out in middle school. It doesn't make a difference. You are capable, but you have to believe that. Right? I don't even know you, and I know that you're capable uh, of that, right? But you have to find a way to believe in yourself, right? So the first things is uh, to check in with your mindset and get rid of all this toxic uh, you know, uh, identity that you might have and just be open-minded. Okay. You don't have to, you know, say, Oh, I'm going to be Albert Einstein. I'm going to be, you know, uh, this like, uh, all, you know, ultimate mathematician, you know, that's kind of maybe tricking your, yourself, but just need be open-minded that you can learn and you can be successful. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the second thing. And that is habits. All right. Now the kind of habits I'm talking about are academic habits. 
Okay, now these are some of the things that you absolutely need to do, and you may not just be aware of this, uh, to be a strong student, okay, and especially in mathematics. So the first thing is you need to be neat, all right? So if you, um, yeah, heck, you know, of course, I didn't write that as neat as I possibly could, but when you're dealing with numbers, symbols, and stuff like that in algebra, you have to be super neat and organized. So if you are not neat and organized, you're going to have to work on that, okay, because that is going to definitely um, be a, uh, you know, um, uh, create a lot of resistance for you being successful, okay? Now, if you haven't been neat for 40, 50 years, you know, and your penmanship and whatnot is terrible, well, you're going to have to start, you know, retraining yourself, okay? So if you're sloppy, you're like, nah, you know, yeah, you know, I, this is the way I've been writing for years and decades. Well, if you're unable to, you know, make an effort to change, then, you know, you're going to be uh, carrying these bad habits. I'm just telling you right now, you got to be willing to change. You'd be open-minded to kind of improve yourself. So if you're not neat, if you're not organized, you know, you need to uh, work on that. Now, the next thing is when you um, uh, learn math, you need to learn how to take notes, all right? So note-taking is a must. In other words, you need to have strong academic habits. Like, how do you approach learning? Well, you should be taking notes. You should be asking questions. You need to be neat. You need to be organized. You need to be doing all the homework. You need to, you know, be, you know, aware of how well you're doing, right? Um, so, you know, these are the kind of habits that you may not have uh, learned in school for whatever reason, okay? So habits here, you know, this this kind of stuff is, you know, a good way to learn academic habits is to, you know, be connected with a strong teacher. So I'm just telling you some general things here uh, to, you know, kind of, you know, some quick tips. But if you are, you know, less than organized and not neat, uh, you know, this is going to be a tough thing. So just get neater, uh, you know, learn how to kind of organize yourself better. This is going to go a long way, okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about, and of course, we're talking about learning algebra as an adult, is material. And this is another huge thing that can really trip you up. So if you happen to be like, yeah, I want to learn algebra, I'm going to go and pick up a little book, you know, for $1, okay, how to learn algebra, in 10 days, something like that, that's okay. You know, you could pick something up and, uh, and get something out of it, actually. You could probably learn some basic math. I'm not saying that you can't. However, if you truly want to learn um, algebra in a comprehensive way, you know, on par to what's being taught in, like, say, top high schools, algebra is a one full year course. Like my algebra course, you can find a link to it in the description below. I think that's like 15 chapters. My particular of course, has a, I want to say somewhere on order of like 300 plus videos, thousands of prompts. It's a huge amount of material. So you have to ask yourself, you know, to what degree do you want to learn algebra? Do you just want to kind of, you know, mess around with it, learn a little bit about it? But if you're serious about truly, you know, comprehending and mastering material, you're going to have to be very selective about your uh, learning material. Okay. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, books, textbooks, worksheets and stuff, those are materials which are, of course, important. But if you do not have a teacher, okay, uh, you're going to have a tough, tough time, right? A teacher is the person that explains things, right? You want an experienced math teacher to, you know, translate what the book is trying to communicate, emphasize things that the book doesn't emphasize, i.e., like common mistakes, like for myself, right? I've been teaching math for decades. I know mistakes uh, that students are going to make before they even make them. Now, how would I know that? Because this is what I do. I've been doing it for years and years and years. So with that experience, I can, you know, be proactive to help students say, hey, don't do that. Do this. This is a better way. This is more important than this, that, and other thing. So you want to get a strong teacher, someone with a lot of experience actually uh, teaching uh, the material. Now, you know, there's a lot of ways to find those. Uh, to find a teacher, you can actually enroll in a class, okay, if that's something you want to do, or you could take, uh, you know, one like a course like mine, okay, but whatever you do, just don't try to do it on your own. In other words, just don't buy a book or uh, get some worksheets and start doing them. I'm not saying that doesn't ha that doesn't have some value, but if you're truly serious about learning and mastering, mastering mathematics, especially algebra, 
get yourself some instruction. Okay, so you can take notes and really kind of see uh, what's going on and see how um, to solve problems. You want to model, okay, how a teacher solves problems, right? That's how how you take notes while you're watching a teacher do things. You're taking notes because you're seeing, you know, the problem solving in action. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. The last thing I want to say is this requires time. Okay, if you are going back and have been away from school for years and years, uh, and you want to now learn algebra, give yourself time. Okay, uh, again, you know algebra, you know at a high school level, uh, you know is a one-year course. Okay, you're talking like nine full academic months, and they're jam-packed. You know, you're talking about students, you know, spending at least an hour and a half per day uh, between the classroom and homework. So it does take a lot of time. So in other words, set your expectation. Uh, don't say like, well, you know, um, I just can't learn algebra and I've been trying to learn it, you know, the last 45 days. That's an unrealistic expectation, okay? Even though that, you know, you're more motivated, more disciplined, uh, certainly than uh, a younger person, um, you're going to have to give yourself a significant amount of time. I would say at a minimum, you know, to get through all the material in a typical first-year algebra course, you're going to need, like, uh, maybe you could do it in four months. Uh, that's if you're working a couple, two, three hours per day. Now, some of you might be saying, no, I could do it faster. Well, yes, you can peruse the course, and you can kind of get, uh, you know, in a kind of an overview of the course. Again, I'm talking about true mastery, okay? So really, you know, you want to give us, it's probably, for most people, the soonest they can go through like a course like mine would be six months, but give yourself up to maybe, you know, one year. Now that's a long period of time, but remember like high school math, that's four years, right? So you got, you know, algebra, geometry, algebra two, there's a lot of material. Now you can compress this. Okay. Uh, it just all depends upon your motivation. And I've seen, um, students, you know, uh, adult learners go from pre-algebra to calculus in a couple years because they were just, you know, totally motivated. So there is, you know, you can certainly accelerate the timeline. But um, again, you know, that's, you know, going to be totally based upon your level of motivation. But here is the final message I want to leave with you. Okay. And that is you can learn. All right. Do not, you know, I try to be the opposite of, um, you know, a teacher that tells students they can't do something. It's really, you know, anyone that says anything like that certainly does not um, belong in the classroom, okay? Now, you might be saying, well, you, you know, if you just tell everyone they can do everything, you're just lying to some people. Well, I don't believe that, okay? I believe, if, believe I personally believe if there's a will, there's a way, okay? Now, some of you learning algebra is going to come, uh, be, you know, be a lot easier than others, okay? And that's totally okay, Okay, but you can be successful even if math is not your thing. That just means you're going to have to work harder and just and be more committed. Okay, but it doesn't mean that you cannot be successful. Okay, so hopefully this video pumps you up to learn algebra and beyond. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need uh, help with anything mathematics, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But you're going to find my best instruction. Uh, within my math courses, and you'll see the links to all of those uh, in the description. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.